Uh, my name is uh, John Flynn, and uh, my role right now with this particular air show here at McKinney, I'm the tour leader for the squadron, and uh, but I'm also the squadron safety officer, and I'm the uh, 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 training officer as well, and I coordinate uh, the assignments of the aircraft crews uh, uh, other than the, the pilots. I uh, coordinate all the other crews and make sure that uh, as part of my job as the tour leader, I make sure that we have sufficient qualified trained people to take the aircraft out on the tours when we travel throughout the country. Uh, during the flights, well, I flew as a crew member this morning uh, on the first flight this morning at nine o'clock and uh, what I do is uh, make sure that we have the aircraft uh, properly manned with uh, trained crew members and, uh, and um, try to make certain that when the aircraft comes back and we set the aircraft up for a cockpit tour so the public can get into the aircraft, we will uh, uh, get everything set up and make sure everything's safe as far as uh, protecting our visitors that come to the aircraft and, and ensure that uh, uh, we give the visitors a good time and, and show as much of the aircraft as we possibly can. We do not have any more World War II crew members. When I start, first started this uh, uh, volunteering for the Commemorative Air Force and the B-29, B-24 squadron back in uh, uh, 2000, uh, there were several Korean War uh, crew members and World War II crew members that were still actively involved in, uh, in the aircraft. And I was kind of a newbie, even though I was retired and maybe uh, 60 years old at the, at the time, but uh, all the folks nowadays are, uh, are younger people. Some have no association with aircraft or the military or anything of that nature, so uh, sometimes it's kind of challenging to uh, uh, get uh, the crew members uh, into the mindset of uh, working together with crews and, uh, and what we have to do to to uh, fly and maintain the aircraft. I joined the uh, Air Force in 1957, uh, in May of 1957, just one day after I graduated from high school, and uh, went off to basic training at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. And my goal was to become a uh, jet aircraft mechanic, a mechanic on jet aircraft. and. Uh, Anyway, I finished a basic training and uh, they sent me to Chanute Air Force Base in Illinois. And I arrived at Chanute uh, and about that time the Air Force was going through a transition where there were a lot of surplus Air Force people that were in so-called soft career fields like supply, cooks, bakers, and those kinds of people. And they wanted to stay in the Air Force so the big job opportunities were jet aircraft uh, maintenance type jobs. And so I went to Chanute Air Force Base as a new guy out of uh, basic training. And all these guys that uh, were coming, there were prior service people were coming to Chanute Air Force Base to go to jet uh, aircraft maintenance school as well. I worked on the uh, engine on the B-29. I mean, that's what I, uh, I went to school at Chanute Air Force Base eventually on the B-29 engine because I couldn't get a, uh, uh, a position in the jet aircraft uh, mechanics class because of all the prior service people that were coming in. And so as a new guy, they said, uh, you can start next week if you want to as a reciprocating engine mechanic. I didn't know what a reciprocating engine mechanic really was, but uh, that turned out to be the 3350 engine that's on the B-29 bomber that we're flying today. So I went through school on that and then uh, they transferred me, they parked the B-29s at that time and so I was transferred to Dover Air Force Base in Delaware and worked on uh, large transport aircraft. And uh, that's where I really started my working on uh, reciprocating engines on, uh, in the Air Force on transport aircraft. The B-29s used in service was very r r relatively short because the B-29, as far as uh, in combat, but in, it was developed in the 30s and uh, in 19... Uh, well, 40, 40, 41, 42, the initial f f was flying, and then uh, they ended up 
in uh, 1945 after World War II was over with. They were used for training and a lot of them were parked after 1945. And um, then in, during the Korean War they were reactivated and they were saw action in Korea. And then after the Korean War they were used a lot. They were experimenting with uh, with uh, air to air refueling. They used them for rescue, uh, weather aircraft, and um, and air. Well, like I said, air to air refueling and and uh, training and that kind of a thing. And then they parked them all, and uh, they parked them about the time that I was in the Air Force and wanted to be a, a jet aircraft mechanic. So anyway, I uh, uh, I think the last ones were parked in like 19. 57 or 1958, I'm not sure exactly when. I was in uh, Thailand uh, during the Vietnam War. I went over to uh, the 8th TAC fighter wing at Ubon, Thailand in uh, 1967. I arrived in Ubon, Thailand in uh, January 1967 and uh, I left uh, in January 1968 right during the, the week that the Tet Offensive was started in 1968. and. Uh, I was, like I said, with, with the 8th TAC Fighter Wing. We had uh, uh, five squadrons of F-4 fighters. And after spending all my Air Force career prior to that in a transport uh, uh, organization, air transport organization with a big cargo aircraft, uh, they tossed me into the mix of these fighter uh, pilots. And uh, I was the, the safety officer for the 8th TAC Fighter Wing at Ubon, Thailand, and uh, under the command of uh, Robin Oles and uh, Chappie James. They were both colonels at that particular time, but uh, it was a challenging job for this safety person in that wing to uh, do my safety job. As a 17-year-old kid going to school on the B-29 at Chinoot Air Force Base, it's, uh, I related to uh, uh, a 16 or 17-year-old kid getting his first car. So the B-29 is like my first car, or first airplane, I guess now. And uh, after I retired from the Air Force after 23 years, and then I went to work for American Airlines and retired from American Airlines after that, and then I finally retired at uh, age 60, I went back to uh, working on the B-29 that I first worked on in 1957 as a 17-year-old 17, 17 youngster. It just uh, it brings tears to your eyes to even think about that because it was very emotional. And I never did not even know that there was a B-29 that was still flying. And uh, it's, uh, it's difficult to really describe because uh, uh, a lot of people think that there's a lot of B-29s out there someplace because they see B-17s and other aircraft like that. but. Uh, it makes me feel great to be, uh, be able to uh, still maintain the aircraft. I'm an A&P mechanic as well, and uh, I've been working on this B-29 now since uh, the first part of the year 2000, and it's been, it'll be, four, well, it'll be 15 years coming up uh, fairly soon here now. Just uh, to watch our B-29 Fifi fly and, uh, and take people for rides that, uh, that uh, were veterans that actually flew on the aircraft or their grandfather or father flew on the aircraft and just seeing the emotions that, uh, that they uh, have when they see us fly the aircraft. We have such a good group of people working for us or volunteering for us with us in the, in the B-29, B-24 squadron and, uh, and they're all a bunch of good people. They work hard, they come early and stay late and uh, it's just communication is, uh, I would say, would be the most uh, challenging part of it. I wouldn't say it's difficult, but just to make sure that everybody's uh, on the same page as to what we're going to be doing, what our schedule is, and what needs to be done. But I really have, in my training job, for example, I have a group of uh, good uh, uh, trainers that uh, we've developed over the years, and, uh, and they all do a good job about that. And I can sleep well at night, even though I live in Pennsylvania, and I'm not out with the airplane all the time. I can uh, rest assured and sleep at night because I know that uh, it's in good hands. It's important to me to keep Fifi flying because uh, we want to share the history of the Air Force 
and the uh, importance of the B-29 in World War II and uh, the way that it uh, helped us uh, close the Pacific theater of the war. And uh, we want to make sure that we uh, have uh, that opportunity to go out throughout the country because so many times uh, the aircraft uh, are parked in museums, they're not flying, and this way we can take the aircraft all over the country and uh, let people uh, see the airplane. We're a traveling museum. Uh, it's like I said, so many times the, the aircraft and all the history is in a museum somewhere, and this way they can smell it, you can hear it, and, and uh, you know what really the B-29 did during World War II. And why, why is it important for you that the youth at, re keep remembering World War II to be able, what's the value of history, I suppose? I, th I think that the value of history is that uh, uh, we went through some very tough times uh, back in World War II and we just don't want to experience that one more time and it's it's great to be able to have this opportunity to show the younger generations uh, what their uh, fathers and grandfathers and their mothers and grandmothers, the Rosie the Riveters and all those people did to help protect our freedom and to uh, protect us from invasion from both the Atlantic and the Pacific theaters. The Commemorative Air Force is a nonprofit organization and it's made up uh, entirely of volunteers. There are a few paid staff members and we have a few paid staff members in our uh, squadron itself uh, and they are the uh, aircraft mechanics primarily and operations uh, officer that uh, are paid on our paid staff. One thing that I'd like to let people know that see this that uh, we get no assistance whatsoever from the government because from time to time I, uh, in discussions with uh, people that are not familiar with the Commemorative Air Force and our organization, uh, they, they, uh, they tend to believe that uh, we get some kind of support from the, uh, from the government to maintain and operate these aircraft. But uh, I think it's very important to let all the people know that, uh, that view this uh, video or this film that uh, it's uh, all do, uh, donations and we're a nonprofit organization. We're not associated with any government entity or anything of that nature. That's great. What we really need to keep the planes alive is, uh, is good volunteers and uh, a lot of money. And it's, uh, I guess it's getting more challenging in the way the economy is these days, but uh, it's very, very expensive to uh, uh, to maintain and fly and continue to and continue to operate the aircraft.